welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this uh, week's episode, which should be episode 21 of The Long Voyage. Mm -hmm. And um, this is going to be... Uh, um, well, we're going to start with the uh, old uh, and almost forgotten ladies and gentlemen of the viewing audience. This is a service announcement. Uh, we have, unfortunately, uh, had to say goodbye to Baggy's player. Um, this is not for any, you know, because we've fallen out or anything of the sort, but for purely uh, um, uh, personal reasons. He's, you know, he's got a family, he's a family man, and he simply wanted to take more time to be with them, which is, in my opinion, the best possible reason for you know cutting back a little bit on the hobby so ladies and gentlemen out there if you have families do not put them um in second place behind role playing um indoctrinate them early yes this is well this is me being moralizing and stuff um we are also today going to have to do without uh, Gilfie's player who is unfortunately not going to be able to make it home in time for game start which means that we're going to be here with a somewhat amputated group of three people tonight. However, this is the usual uh, rule in our uh, role-playing group: is that we will play if we can have, you know, if, if we can have uh, three players turn up, then then we shall uh, we shall play. Um, however, just to make things really beautiful. Um, um, uh, we we are still going to be at least one player short. Ilva's player is going to join us as quickly as possible, but she's going to be slightly late. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen of the viewing audience, welcome to the most chaotic start to an episode of The Long Voyage in the existence of the game. Um, hmm. And on that note, we are going to uh, hand over the baton to uh, to you, Chris, so you can do a recap of last time. Um, mm -hmm. And as you do so, uh, I, I do once again apologize for the awful sound quality last week, but that had simply got something to do with the fact that we've had uh, huge difficulties with Discord, which is the program we use to communicate with one another. We hope that that isn't going to be an issue going forward, but if that if it does, if it is, we shall have to look for a um, an alternative of some kind because Skype and the sound quality on Skype is somewhere between atrocious and criminal. Um, but anyway, as I said, Chris, please do take us through a recap. Yes, try and find some order in the chaos. <laughs> yes. What happened last time? We continued in our group to journey through the Lotus Lands and came to the... Uh, we came to a much larger settlement than we'd seen before, to a city, essentially. Yes. Uh, I believe is I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Kepa? Yes, Kepa. Yes. Which literally translates to awful. Yes. Um, and we found lodgings there at a... Um, at a well, something like an inn, but it, it's 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 it also doubles up as um, how should I put this, as a house of negotiable affection. Oh, thank you. Nod to Terry Pratchett there. Any any, any opportunity? Any, any opportunity? Op the late great Terry Pratchett. Too soon. Mm hmm. Always. Anyway, well, point is yes. Uh, at this at this income brothel. And we were treated to a very nice um, bath and massage. We got some nice clothes, uh, some nice food and drink. And we were all feeling very happy with ourselves as we went off following uh, one of the one of the uh, one of our allies who had come uh, to the city um, for their own purposes. Was that uh, Eileen? Yes, right. Eileen needed to come here to make. Um... Uh, business arrangements uh, for her, uh, well, you know, for cloth, basically. Yes, and we got to meet with um, her contact there, who was um, see who 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 was kind of the uh, the representative of the various uh, merchants within the city to its leaders, and talked about the whole grey situation regarding the rulership of the city and the surrounding environs and about. This, that, and the other thing that could be done, that couldn't be done, that we might be able to do while we were here. And then after that, we all decided to kind of 
head off and go our separate ways and do our own things. Uh, some of us went back to the inn, some of us went shopping on other purposes, and I do believe uh, Frodi and Eileen decided to go on a very interesting uh, sojourn to a shop that sold uh, curiosities of a supernatural nature, at least of a magical nature. And we met the most epically voiced creepy old dude um, selling all kinds of things that just the descriptions of which just made people's skin crawl and that that, that was the exchange was in depth and fantastically well done and it just left everyone thinking let's never speak to that man again which of course we placed an order there yes of course I mean yes so yeah that was, I think, I, I can't remember, I think that's roughly where we, I think we left off on that, we also left off on the note of um, sort of coming to the end of the day and whether or not people were going to be um, resting at the inn and what they were going to be doing. I think most people, bar a couple of them, of, of, the, of the players, had decided that they were going to make use of the offered uh, companions that the, uh, the inn provided, and those companions did not necessarily have to involve intimate relations they could just be for a stimulating conversation if that's what one desired like what a, uh, an actual geisha for example would actually do you know, yes of course music, stimulating conversation tea that sort of thing of course i know that most people said uh, they 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 would they declined just because they didn't fancy it i know that i said that sindri would because he's curious yes indeed indeed and but I he's come a long way from disliking anything foreign f to yes. sampling the local cuisine. Absolutely. Um, was that was that was that a was that a, was that a double entendre there, Prasmus? Uh -huh, oh, it might have been. No idea. Have been, but oh, yeah. double entendres are, you know, twice as good as single ones. Aha! 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 So yes, I. If there was anything I else, I. GM out there. Of course, if I, I'm, there might have been some things that I've missed, but I, I no, honestly, that's, that is roughly it. That is roughly it. Um, and uh, that means that when we rejoin you guys, we shall in fact rejoin Sindri. <laughs> oh dear. And did he he had gone to a drinking establishment where he had been. That that's true. That that's one thing. You missed. That was one thing I did miss. Yes, yes there was some. Had, some of you had gone to a um, a the local um, the local rumor mill. Yes, and, the local uh, rumor mill, which was not quite a dive because it was too good for that. They had too good produce there, but it it was a place where people went to get hammered. Yes. So yeah. And we learned things. You did indeed learn things. You you heard learned about things. some real discontent with Lord Sung, who is the um, uh, the leader and the ruler of the city. <clears throat> yes, that was that actually that was that was the that was the thing we did end on actually I remember now. Yes. Um was that um Ulva met with the son of the man in charge of the local garrison who was interested in painting her pic her portrait because he was a painter, not a warrior. Oh we'd forgotten quite a bit actually, but yes. That's Professional she yes. did meet with the young man named Tang Chao, and he, um, in fact, this young fellow, who mm -hmm. who had um, taken her back to his studio and uh, had painted her likeness, uh, something which Ilva initially had a dif had difficulty understanding what meant, and when she saw what it was, she was quite taken with it because it was obviously very impressive um, and I think yes and, and that means that she went there but that left um, that did leave uh, Sindri on his own probably did um, but I think if, if that was the case he would probably have left the room and gone back to the uh, to the to the inn I'm sure it had a name as well but you know we're so professional ladies and gentlemen it, viewing it, audience it did in fact have a name and it was run by this uh, fantastic lady. So it is called the Scarlet Cloud. Oh, yes. 
which is like a slight, I believe is a, a like a, a posher way of saying the red mist. Yes. So it's a place where you get very angry. Well, it is slightly higher up than mist. It has risen above a mist. Uh, so it's that, that, that it's like it's like that that kind of of rage you get when you're actually really quite calm. Mm, it might be yes. Thinking something entirely different when you say mist. I wonder why. Um, mm. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh. <laughs> so, yes, Cindy will go back to the Scarlet Cloud. Yes. And um. Once you were there, uh, I mean, you have your room. Um, mm -hmm. There is one of the uh, the employees in the place who who turns up um, pretty much the moment you you know you you set foot in the place and asks if there is anything you would uh, you require or that you would like. You know, just to be on the on the safe side. Mm hmm. Uh, I think he'll ask for. I don't think Sindri's had tea yet, but he'll be. He, he, he'll ask. He'll ask he for would, a drink of. Yes, he would at least know what tea is from Lanwan, where you know yes. quite a few people had it. So it's up to you whether he has tried it. But yeah, I think he will try it simply because he wants something to drink that's not alcoholic. <laughs> yes. Um, and let's face it, this is a. This is still a sort of. Pre, this is still a pre-medieval setting. I can't imagine that clean running water is available to all and sundry. Um, well, can I ask? I mean, he could, but in his case, he's definitely going to still going to be asking for tea. Yes. Well, he he is obviously he is uh, served uh, tea. Uh, they ask if you would like it in the common room or if you wish to have it brought to your own room. The latter. Sindri would like to enjoy some uh, private time. Yes, well, they have no problem with that. They bring uh, the food to, or not the food, but the tea uh, to your, um, uh, to your, uh, uh, your, your room. And uh, seeing as you are clearly foreign, uh, the young lady who brings it up there asks you if you would like. Um, she asks if you would like for her to, you know, prepare it so that it is, you know, made correctly. He nods. He's curious about this because he, he has also heard that apparently there's some damn stupid ritual they go through to make it. I mean, just make it. It's a drink. What ceremony do you need? Uh, she, she is. Uh, she doesn't go through the entire ritual unless oh, that is what has been agreed upon. Uh, mm. There is a tea uh, ceremony, a tea ritual, uh, but it is not. Uh, it, it's. It is as you say. It's lengthy, and tea is also something that you well you simply drink. So so she simply makes you tea and leaves it for you and retreats mm. and, and yeah there you go. Excellent. She's all. So rather taken aback by all this strange new stuff, and I think he will, he will get his first. He'll, he'll certainly try it. I mean, he'll be he'll be he'll be smart enough to realise that it's clearly hot. There's steam oh, coming off it. Clearly, yes. So he'll he'll very carefully have a sip of of, of it. It is. Uh, it has this taste of of uh, jasmine. It's a taste that you would have clearly or definitely um, tried in 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 uh, Lanwan, if nothing else. And the fat goose, did they use jasmine? Yes, yes they do. Um, Excellent. So, yes, that would be where you... Um, hmm. You would have, you know, familiarised yourself with that particular flavour. Um, mm -hmm. It is, well, it's refreshing and, and pleasant, like, you know, tea is. It's, it's I, Again, as I've said before, this is green tea. Um, yes, and it's, I mean... It's a new sensation, and it's 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 it it it, it certainly feels weird for Sindri. It's got him all very introspective, because again, as as was mentioned um, before this, he is he has been very dismissive of other cultures as all being strange and un, unnatural, even as sort of being something to be 
afraid of or to be or to or to shut or to you know scoff at and now that he's sort of developed a taste for actually trying new things he's aside from the fact that he enjoys it he's all it's 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 leading him to really think about himself quite a lot it's, yeah he, he's not it's, it's weird because he's not drunk or high but it's it's getting him philosophical and it's he's not used to that feeling no he's, yeah. he's used to just getting things done well you what 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 is he musing on while he's sitting there if anything in particular um how far he's how far he and his friends and his uh, shipmates have come about his duties to to his friends his duty to Orma, his duty to the raven lady and the fact that he still feels a little bit bitter about the fact that he's being asked to essentially perform a duty to the raven lady for, for the raven lady behind Orma's back because again this ties into his flaw of of um which we've got for his character where he's loyal he has a greater sense of loyalty to the crew than he does to the Raven Lady, even though he is loyal to the Raven Lady, of course. Of course yeah, but but it's, it, the crew is his immediate family, basically. And so, as much as he does respect the Raven Lady, and as much as he will, of course, do as he's told by it, he's... It's grating on his nerves. It Very much so, yes. And he's struggling... Part of the reason why he's been so interested to try new things, I think, is because he's, it's allowed him to disguise, it's to distract from that feeling. Because he just does not know how to reconcile it. No. That, um... Well, that makes uh, perfect sense, obviously. Uh, everything to consider. Um, what you uh, realize as you're sitting there, you haven't had much, you know, none of you have had time to really spend much time in your rooms up until this point. You, you had your bath and got dressed you, you did you, I mean obviously you were shown to your rooms but you went to get you know a bath pretty much immediately thereafter so as you sit there you have time to to take in the the, the room as such and and uh, you're, you know sipping your tea and, and thinking and so on and so forth and you realize that there are these pictures on the wall again not exactly something you're used to from you know anywhere else You've seen again. You've seen you know painted scrolls and so on hanging on walls in in uh, in Lanwan, uh, but these are actually quite good. Hmm. Um, again, this is not a a bottom feeder establishment. It's a it's a nice place that that you know caters to decent folk. Um, but you do uh, actually give me a perception sight. Which should be pretty easy for you. I should hope so. This is why uh, he feels it horribly. Perception vision. Yes. No, I think that's a pretty good roll. And I think I just lost um, uh, contact with the. Um, I just lost contact with. Uh, uh, roll roll 20? twenty. Yeah. This the same with Roll Twenty? Uh, no, no, it's it was as I said. My computer is frozen. It's not. It's not. You know. It's it's. Well, it, if it if it was yeah. just the um, Roll Twenty thing, maybe it no, would have no, been was, your internet, uh, but everything was entire, okay. It was my entire computer. <laughs> everything was frozen. Oh yep. shit! Well, you just got kicked out. I see. Yes. So I'm coming back in. I hope. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm trying. That was weird. It's, it's Ladies, still not behaving as it should. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the viewing audience, this is a second service announcement. It is clear that all things electronic are conspiring to ensure the long voyage is a technical shit show. <laughs> it really is. It 
it's absolutely ridiculous. It's and like one of the stores we have here in Denmark, where they <laughs> keep saying that it'll only take five minutes to do this, but mm -hmm. they want you to stay so much longer. Yeah. This is the same thing. This is clearly the same thing. I'm, I'm having enormous difficulties right now. Um, okay, it seems to finally be letting me back in ish yeah, this is okay um you're in i'm back in or oh you can do it something this is the weirdest shit i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen that's you know for the language but this is really 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 bothersome anyway um so yeah you you're, have a... yeah you're sitting um in 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 your room and I did not see the roll, but it should be here somewhere, obviously. It, 12, uh, yeah. 12, 16. Yes, I can see it. Um, and uh, this means that you do sort of take in some of the details of this, um, of this room, and of the paintings in particular, because they're, they're very detailed. There's quite a lot on them. Hmm. And... Um, you see a a uh, you see a scene painted. Um, it looks like mm. the reason why your your eyes fall on that is it's almost enough to remind you of something back home. There's a a, a promontory painted on the the on the um, uh, on on this uh, piece. Uh, of course, this in itself is a you know a bit like uh, Tinganes back home. Um, but there are uh, figures there as well, small, tiny figures actually, and you can see there is a a um, what looks to be a woman standing at the precipice of this uh, promontory, and uh, there are people on horses. Um, um, there are people on horses uh, facing her, and. It looks like uh, she's falling over the the precipice, and you can see um, red feathers. It's it's all painted. It's small, but it's very detailed. Oh my! Yes, that definitely got Sindri's attention. It's like, who the hell painted this? Yes. And I must, he must. He's going to have to find out more. Yes, obviously. Well, if well, if and when his companion turns up in his room, he'll ask questions about it. Of maybe. Course. Yes. Um, but as you sit there appreciating art, I think we shall pop over to. Um, we shall pop over to Frothy, who <laughs> is well. He's placed an order for some incense, and he is contemplating making a purchase. Otherwise, I know, but. There are still some hours Poor uh, until the uh, until the uh, uh, what is it called um, uh, the incense is done. So what would he like to do in the meantime? I don't think he's got anything planned. So does Eileen want to do anything? Oh, she's uh, well. She's taking care of what she needs to take care of, but uh, so you know, f she's quite interested in knowing if there is anything you would like to do because you've been nice enough to accompany her as well. So you know, quid pro quo and everything. Um, but no, uh, honestly, I think she paid that back by talking with the creepy old man. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you no, know, she she suggests uh, in that case um, seeing if there isn't some kind of oh, some kind of entertainment in in uh, in in the city, some you know, street actors or jugglers or something of the sort. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. And um, so you know, she sets out to find, if nothing else, a marketplace. That's usually where you'd find stuff like that. And um, uh, and and you went along. You're going along. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Well, you find um, one of several marketplaces. This one is one where they they sell. You know, it isn't dedicated to one particular kind of wares. So there's quite a bit of different stuff. This is the place where they sell 
all the things that don't fit into the um, uh, animal products or vegetables um, uh, categories, fruit and vegetables categories, because they have their own dedicated markets. Hmm, interesting. And they're fairly close by each other, you know, they're just... So anybody who needs to do their shopping doesn't have to run from one side of the town to, you know, the other, but... Uh, but this is the Sundries market. And huh. uh, you see very strange people here, you know, people who don't look like they're local. Um, oh, as like well. what? Uh, people who look like they are from, you know, potentially quite far away, in fact. Um, selling, uh, some are selling cloth of various kinds, which, of course, um, uh, Eileen is, is very interested in, but there are also people selling all manner of other things, um, even up to and including um, weaponry and, and you know bows and arrows and stuff like that. Um, ah. Not swords or, or major pieces of armor or anything of the sort, because most <coughs> it's, it's not permitted for most people to own stuff like that, but again, people do go hunting, so that's what Yeah, I should hope so. Um, um, yeah. Uh, is there anything you, you know, you, uh, Frothy might be stopping to, to look at? I mean, they don't have, have the kind of weapon he prefers, but I think ex inspecting the quality and the make of it would probably be, you know, interesting to him. And, and, and to be honest, you know, it's, it's like in most places, the, the quality varies, you know, some things are excellently, you know, beautifully crafted and other stuff is... Yeah, shoddy craftsmanship, to put it mildly. They they have a, a bit of, you know, a bit of everything here, really. Um, well, that's, re that's easily enough to, you know, if you just go around and look at it, I'm certain that's enough to look at. Absolutely. Um, hmm. Just a moment here. There yes. you go. You, um... You do, uh, as you walk through the, um, as you walk through the, uh, uh square, uh, you bump into, uh, a person, uh, or oh. rather he bumps into you, uh -huh. um, this man, um, it's, it's a fairly crowded place, you know, obviously, there are quite a lot of people there. Um, he he's uh, he's clearly in a hurry, and and consequently, you know, his his shoulder bumps into into you as he passes you by. Uh, he is um, he is fairly you know he's small. He's a small man, so he he bumps into you, some part of your arm, um, rather than you know shoulder to shoulder. Uh, but he he does you know. Uh, look up and, and, and you know his eyes go wide for a second and he's like clearly he, he's never seen anything quite like you and again obviously you're garnering a fair amount of attention here but I think uh, um, <laughs> as soon as a man looks up at him authority does uh, you know uh, ah excuse me so, yeah, some yes like and, and he he actually uh, when when you say that he he you know bows his head politely and says uh, no, no, I was the one um, uh, at fault. Uh, please pardon me for my um, inattentiveness. And then he uh, he uh, um, hurries to uh, you know to continue on. Uh, what makes you? Uh, or what 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 makes this a, a a situation of note is the fact that when he leaves, Eileen is looking. She has a curious look on her face. Mm -hmm. and she, you know, she, her eyes follow him as he disappears into the crowd. Mm. See something you like? <laughs> she smirks and then, no, but there is something about that man. I don't know what it is, but he might have looked a little disheveled, but he's important. I'm not sure why I think so, but I can just, there's something about him. Well, there's a lot to be said about intuition. Want to follow him? Uh, you know what? Yes, I think I would. 
well, then we're following him. I mean, I think Thordy might be a little cocky, but he does feel like he doesn't have that much to be afraid of right now. <laughs> no, that that is uh, not illogical. Um, yeah. I really like the idea of the bright red-headed person trying to shadow someone. Yes. He sticks out know. like a fucking sore thumb. And he's, Yes, and he sticks out like a sore thumb in more ways than one, because he sticks up over everyone else as well. He's taller than exactly. anyone else here. But um, it does seem like this man is in a, a great hurry, and he doesn't look back at any time. He's, he doesn't... He, he never turns his head. He's, you know, going very... He's very determined. And... Um, as you follow him out of the, the marketplace, uh, from time to time, Eileen, you know, kind of puts a hand on your, on your, you know, she puts a hand on your arm or something. It's like, no, 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 wait a second, you know, just holds you back when it seems like, oh, you might get too close or something. Turns out she's pretty good at shadowing people. That's good, because Frodi isn't. No, but she, she clearly knows what she's doing. And I think he comments on it uh, in a friendly manner. And <clears throat> she she blushes slightly and says, "Well, <clears throat> I I wasn't always a seamstress." Ah, sounds like there's a story there. Uh, I suppose there is, probably duller than you think. Um, but um, and she says, and, and you know, and again, it, it focuses on following uh, the man. And he <coughs> he heads to a um, he heads to a nice looking house uh, elsewhere in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, city of of, uh, of Kepa, but it's it is not <coughs> sorry. Um, let me just do something here and quickly swap you guys. There. We Oh. It is a, uh, as I said, it's a nice looking uh, place, but um, it's uh, this one here in, in the back. Yes. So as you can tell from this image, um, this is a, a, you know, Kepa is, is a city where as you walk through um, these, these streets, they're fairly narrow, you're far away from the main uh, the main city uh, um, uh, uh, squares and so on. You have, you know, up here behind, you have the the, the primary um, residential areas, and as you can tell, they kind of build for height. Um, mm -hmm. I think Thrody comments that if the man checks, a lot of people would probably have noticed them now that they're not in the busy market area, Indeed. because he stands out. Yes, he definitely. And and again, you are definitely noticed. There is you you simply cannot hide. There there is no need to even try because you you cannot hide in this uh, in this environment. But the um, well, n at least you can't hide amongst people, so to say. You can't can. hide in the crowd. No. Could hide behind a barrel. Yes, exactly. Large barrel, but yes. <clears throat> but you are. Uh, as as you get to this this house, you see uh, a couple of large guards. They are not they're not armed. Um, clearly, that might present problems in this you know in this legal environment. But they are large, heavily built, very muscly men, who look like they might not actually need weapons um ah like ilva who can do the whole wrestling thing exactly perhaps. something like that they uh, open the door and let in this uh this person uh, into the into the building he simply nods at the guards and they let him in and and Eileen is uh she she frowns a little and says this is this is strange. I don't know, I just have this weird feeling about this. You know where we are. Well, I've, I've, I mean, I've been to Kepa before and I know this, this, this is not a, 
This is not a particularly rich part of the city, but it's it's not poor as such either. But that house is it's rather nice. Whoever lives there has some wealth. More so than that's than is normal. Well, it's a little out of place and in, in a sort of you know this this area is probably for people on the lower end of, of society. Hmm. Well, I don't think we can just walk past the guards. So, what now? Uh, well, for one thing, I guess we need to find out who actually lives here and see if we can find some excuse to get in. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if you have traveling seamstresses, but do, but I'm, I'm, I'm an awful liar. <laughs> that's strange. You're so good at sneaking around. Yes, that's yeah. not necessarily the same thing. No, I just find that people who are good at one of them usually are good at the other. You know, for when they get caught. Yeah, true, but no, I'm, I'm not good at it. Hmm, well... Um, I don't think we can count on my ability to... I guess we could ask around and figure out who lives there. Yes, that's... Uh, you should probably talk. Probably a good idea. Otherwise, they're going to hear that there is a very large, strange-looking man asking questions about who lives there. I'm not that strange-looking. For these people, yes, you are. You have red hair, Frothy. Well, maybe my mother was an Oni. My grandmother certainly could have been. See, that in itself, <laughs> that in itself would make you very strange. He chuckles and shrugs. Um, but let's, you know, sure. She, she, uh, she, you know, looks around and sees there's a. Uh, there's a man carrying a, a what looks like a, a small bushel of rice, and she she you know calls out to him, and he, he stops, and she asks him a few questions about the house, and and he says that, oh, 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 you can't be local. Everybody knows that is the uh, that is the um, um, that is the uh, residence of the Dan family. They live there. there, there sisters or something else. And, and, uh, um, Eileen smiles to him and nods and says, oh, oh, right, I should have known. I'm, I'm yes, as you say, I'm not local, but I should have known. Thank you very much. And she lets him go, and, and then she comes back to you and she says, well, I guess we need to find out who the Dunn family is. Hmm. And what makes this these women so special? Yes. Um, how? Um, well, maybe first and foremost, we should try and find your friends. Oh, you're going to storm the place then? <laughs> because best. that's what we're best at. Yes, but I, I mean, maybe not, but they've been out all day they might have heard things and even if they haven't we might as well all look for information i mean sure we could probably figure this out but if the people up there are not friendly there is only one of you and i can't fight oh don't worry about that if you just run away and i'll try not to oh this city looks awful fl awfully flammable <laughs> I'd, I'd really prefer it if you didn't burn anything for me them. too I like this place it's very nice looking but people, innocent people will get very badly hurt even killed if you set fire to it well I suppose I'll have to rely on my Southland swordsmanship he rolls his, uh, his shoulders and looks ready okay yeah well I, I, I guess she says that's sure well, if you have any ideas, I'm, I'm certainly open to them. 
Well, I had an idea, but it's not really related to this. I just thought, well, maybe I'm employed as your bodyguard uh, for the time being. Oh, and you mean that, that then I, I walk up there and offer my services? I mean, that's an option. Sure, we can try it. But if you'd rather, we can go find the no, other no, straight. No, that, no actually, that's, that's I mean, the worst thing they can say is no thank you, isn't it? Yeah. What what title should I address you as? I'm I'm not noble, so you could really just say my name. You know, no. even commoners hire uh, bodyguards from time to time. Hmm. And maybe I'm just a strong stoic type. You could be. That that's probably a good idea because your accent is dreadful. <laughs> ha! I know. So, okay, and she, she smiles and says, well, here we go, uh, bodyguard. <laughs> then she, she uh, turns around and, and, and looks towards the house and, and a little nervously and says, it, it, strictly speaking, it isn't lying. I mean, I am a seamstress and, and you know, maybe, maybe these two young women need clothes. You never know. And she, I'm, I'm certain you've tried having to sell your wares before. Yes, yeah. that's true. That's true. It's Just do that. Okay, okay. I'll I'll do the selling of wares, and you can do the the snooping. That, okay, that that's that's fair. Uh, she heads up towards the um, the building, and yes, and Throdi does his best to look big and bodyguardy, and yes. make sure to you know keep an eye on the environment just to be sure, and also because it gives him an excuse to take in every detail he can. Yes. Uh, well, you get uh, you guys get up there and. Lo and behold, the guards kind of have this whole "thou shalt not pass" thing. Hmm. And uh, Ilan steps forward and, and bows very deeply, very respectfully, and, and says, uh, um, "Please excuse me, uh, uh, good sirs. Um, my name is Ilan. I'm a, a seamstress and." I have been told that the uh, Dan daughters, sisters, I'm, I'm not from, from Kepa, but um, I am looking to expand my, my base of customers, and I'm told that the sisters are something else, and I'm wondering if they might be interested. And one of the guards immediately was like, no, you... You do not have an appointment. Go away. The other guard is saying, well, I suppose we can ask. And the first guard is like, No, they don't have an appointment. They can go away. And and the, the second guard is like, Stop being such a... Stop being so... And he uses a word that you're not quite sure what means, but it includes you're pretty sure it refers to a bull's testicles somehow yeah and um i take a, a second to glance at her just to see what her reaction to it is she blushes <laughs> and um, um in that case i memorized the word uh so so yeah so he says um i'm i'm uh, i'm going to go in and ask if perhaps there is an interest um, however, that man is armed. He's not bringing his weapons inside. And and the, the, the first guard nods and says, Well, you go in and I will keep an eye on them. And then, well, the second guard goes inside and Eileen uh, smiles and looks up at you and says, Well, I'm certain if we get inside that you, my, my bodyguard here would would not have a problem, you know, leaving his weapon at the door, and... Uh, Throaty leans down and, you know, and not yeah, whisper, yeah. but in a low uh, tone of voice, uh, tells her that Southlanders are very much not fond of losing their weapons. Not that he's one willing to unarm, but he needs someone to make sure he gets it back because oh. it's Southlander make, yes. and... Yes. Oh, she, she nods at that and says, well... Yeah, obviously yes you would be you know it's you wouldn't be giving them your weapon you would just let them you know safe keep it while you're there as a visitor 
So long as they actually keep it safe. <laughs> they will. I am absolutely convinced of that. And the, um, the, the, the guard does actually, you know, he eyeballs you a bit and then he says, where, where is this only like beast from? And, and, um, uh, uh what's he called? Uh, and the, uh, um, uh, Island says, well, he, uh, he, he is a, a, a traveler from a very, very distant land. Uh, who their ship arrived in uh, in my at my home, where I live uh, normally, and and they have become friends of of the whole community, and uh, now they have agreed to accompany, uh, well not only me but several others on a on a long uh, on a long uh, uh, journey well, through the the yes uh, a long journey through the the uh, uh, through these lands and further on. Uh, to um, uh, well, to everybody's benefit, really. They they are they are magnificent warriors, and and the, the guard seems to be perfectly satisfied with that answer, and and he says, well, um, well, we shall see what the what the uh, uh, the ladies uh, feel about a visit, and he's only just basically said that when the second guard comes back out again and nods and says um, so long as as the the great uh, warrior um, um, disarms and leaves his weapon in the care of the uh, of, of the steward of the house while he visits uh, you are welcome to enter and, uh, Eileen, uh, who is incidentally still bowing, um, says that that is uh, that is perfectly uh, acceptable. Thank you very much. And then she um, she uh, she stands more upright and goes um, and goes in uh, to uh, goes into the. Um, uh, the building and you can follow if you so desire of course i imagine there's someone in there ready to take my weapons yes there's a a, a, a man inside he's he is uh, in his mid 30s he's, he, yeah. i he's think they person. should be happy i'm also unarmored currently because otherwise i'd look even scarier yes but they, um, he, he does, you know, he holds out his, his hands, both, you know, both hands, palms up, so you can place your sword carefully in, in his, in his hands. He, he takes it seriously, there's no question. Um, no. And he's, clearly he's quite surprised at the weight of it, if you, you know, when you give it to him, because it's a sizable weapon, obviously, compared to what they normally wield around here. Um... He does. Yes. Look, he does look impressed, uh, but he he um, he takes it to a uh, a low table where he immediately wraps it in a piece of cloth, uh, you know, and then he sits by it to make sure that it's kept safe. That is acceptable. And um, while we um, we we shall hop from there and over to Ilva because you know then we can deal with what happens in there uh, a little bit later. But Ilva, you have had your picture painted. Yeah. Yeah. What you do now? Send him the box. Oh right, right. You had that's right. What was that again? It was a little uh, box made out of a bone, probably uh, yes. a bone from a That's big fish or something. Of course, something. yes, that was the for, in trade for the uh, for the for the picture. And he's, One he's, her daddy carved, yes, and he true. is rather good at it. Yes. It even has little hinges. Yes, and and he is very uh, very happy with it. You know, you can tell his, his his eyes kind of almost glow when he he takes it, and he he's he asks you. If the the carvings on here, because they're they're so unlike anything he has ever seen, it's a 
style he's completely unfamiliar with, obviously. So he asks if if this is the the if this is typical of of how you would you know carve um, uh, uh, wood or other materials where you're from. It is. Uh, we have different animals we carve, obviously. Of course. That you have on that thing is dire wolves. Dire wolves? Well, we have wolves, but I take it these are somewhat different? Yeah, they are larger. Oh, how large? He's... She indicates the length and height. He, his jaw drops and he's... That's... Terrifying. Yeah, I heard about your tigers. They're little versions of our ice ravers. I am almost afraid to ask, but what is an ice reaver? If you look at the lid, that's an ice reaver. Oh. Oh, so it's got these very long teeth, but it is yeah. a cat of some kind. Yeah. And it's larger than what you just showed me? Yeah. The dire wolves are not as large as ice reavers. Ice reavers are about this size, and they eat our bears. He he doesn't doubt your words. He You know, he's too polite to do that. But he does look scared. <laughs> it, that that yeah. would be a terrifying opponent. It is. Most Southlanders does not want to meet one. I can definitely understand why. And I mean, you are physically impressive people. Um, but that does sound truly horrifying. Uh, it, uh, I I should I'm 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 most grateful for this trade. It's it. This is a, a real treasure for me because. You see, he says, and, and, and lights up in a, in a warm smile, he says, for an artist, it is always important to find new inspiration. And, and this is such a different way of using form that I, I'm, I can, th there is so much energy in this. Oh, you remind me of one from my group. Oh? His name is Gilfi. He's a healer. He always looks up new medicine in every city he comes to. That is a noble pursuit, and, and wise, particularly from a healer. Has he found new medicines in the Empire that he can use? I'm actually not aware yet. Okay. Um, he says, and, and says, tell you what. Why don't I... T I have an idea. Come with me, he says. I will show you something. She walks with the man. Yes. And he takes you... It's a short walk. He takes you to a small uh, shop and and says, well, the, um, the owner of, of this place does sell medicines. Um... But but don't uh, don't don't mind him. He's a little strange. But but uh, you know, the uh, uh, he does sell medicine, and, and and some of it is actually very effective. Ooh, Delphi would love this place then. Probably would. Um, shall we go in and have a look? Yeah, let's. Okay. Well, you enter this this cluttered. Uh, s shop with all manner of of uh, pots and and you know what are they call it um, uh, not urns but lidded pots with writing on them and and so on 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 shelves and various mysterious bits of whatever hanging from threads in the ceiling and and. There's a strange odor in in the place, not particularly unpleasant, but a little old smell. Slightly old. Pizza hanging corpse from the ceiling. Oh, definitely. Um, uh, and and at the other end is who is clearly the proprietor. Cool. 
So, what you do? Well, Ilva knows nothing about medicine. No. But she is looking at the different things. A lot of, of strange objects. There is one place with eyeballs in some kind of liquid. Um, they don't look like human eyeballs, admittedly, but, you know... Um, yeah. Um, she stares pointedly at them for a moment, yes. then looks back at... Jiao. What do they do? I think you'd have to ask him, he says, and points to the man at the uh, table on the other end, who is sitting there smoking <laughs> smoking something um, very nice smelling. Uh -huh. and well, I th actually, I think, well, I think before we go on with that, I think we should take our first break here and we'll come back and see what you do with, you know, in the shop after the break. But we've reached, you know, the, the one hour mark. So let's do that. And, yeah. and we shall be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with more uh, The Long Voyage. <laughs>